hello everyone my name is yogesh in today's video i will explain you how to do a query optimization in sql server now this session is uh, you can say is split into two things this session will call only one after it the worst thing is like finding which are the queries which need an optimization and that's a separate video i will be making in future and there are a lot of Trick, you can say not a trick or a mechanism to figure out which query need an urgent performance tuning so that your server can have a impact now understand one almost the main thing it's not about the query which is running for long time is damaging your server in a lot of the cases small running queries can also damage so that we will cover in this scenario and we'll figure it out how it makes a difference okay so uh, so in this video to be very clear i am telling you how to optimize your query not how to find the bad queries so that's a separate topic okay so let's start with now before starting any tuning the first thing is you should be able to know how to see an execution plan and most of the time i have seen people they don't know how to see the execution plan itself they know the basic rule data flow from right to left and so and so the execution plan is from left to right but that's very basics even i don't even look into those part till the time it's not necessary so the first thing is just seeing an execution plan suppose you have a plan of like 1000 uh, line of query which is having 100 joins you know you can say and 10 20 sub queries you won't be able to figure it out where the problem is so this session will be more focused on that just by seeing the plan you will be able to understand which part is having the problem and you will be able to figure it out where is that part and then how to fix it now how to fix it will depend upon uh, you can say query to query because you understand like sql server is something where general programming rule doesn't apply give an example so in a programming let's say if you are a .NET developer if i ask you what are the oops concepts what is solid principle you will be able to answer and there is a way of doing certain things but in sql server there is a way of writing the query it can be possible naming convention can be possible but your database will be different and my database will be different so your joint condition will be for sure different than mine so that's why we cannot assume one solution will apply everywhere but i will tell you where so these things what i will be explaining will be common across all the execution plans so doesn't matter whether you are using any database it will still tell you like where is the problem and how to fix it i will cover few scenarios okay so let's start with the first basic thing so first thing is like how to read an execution plan and use statistics time and io now a lot of people think like long running query is a problem as i told you in the initial itself but a lot of times small running query can be more problematic means suppose you have a long running query which you need to run in a once a month or twice a month then what will happen is you still can afford for two or three hours query but if a small running query which is taking three seconds and i use that query one million time in a second then your server has a problem if i that query is not tuned so all the things goes to that like how many uh, you can say times the query is running and how bad it is making to the server so let's start with a basic execution plan now understand one thing if you are a db or a soft sql developer still you need to follow the same statistics so like steps so first is you should always enable statistics io and time on so if you don't need time because you know the time uh, so then you can ignore it but io is the most important part and why it is most important part is suppose your query is so if you are not familiar with a few terms let me just introduce i haven't made them in slides uh, but let me explain you so there is a, so one term called as physical read and logical read physical read is nothing but actual reading of data from the disk and the logical read is reading the data from the memory now when this thing happens so your sql server do a lot of io operation io can be logical and physical io means input output it has to read data from the memory it has to put the data into some memory and it has to give you data some from the memory or it has to read data from so there is some steps like it could be possible uh, you are querying two tables both are in memory it is reading one table uh, filtering it out certain record then reading second table filtering out certain record and making a join and giving the output so in all the operations there is an input output involved and there is a time always there so time is the secondary unit the first thing is input output suppose i have a query which runs in one second and do one million logical reads and now i optimize the query and i said 
so still the time is like less than one second and still i i am able to optimize that query instead of 1 million reads logical read it is doing 10000 logical read believe me even though you don't see change in time but it will be far better for your server because now you can run 100 queries in parallel because still they won't be able to make 1 million read okay so let's start with a practical example so first is i will turn on this set statistics i on i went time on and i will run this query it will take a bit to complete let it run and you don't have to see in the query what it is doing first is like what is wrong with the query let's focus on that and this is the second query uh, which is the second version of the same let me just put into other tab run the set statistics style on time and io on here as well and run this query now this query just ran in a fraction of second now uh, the total number of record it gave me 384 and this is the very simple execution plan and if i see these are the statistics i got okay let me just drop one index because that i will be covering in next session also like in this video so let me just drop that and see the performance without an index okay let me just run this query again so again it is taking less than one second the execution plan oh it still now haven't dropped the index that's crazy why that much time okay oh i think this query is running that's why let me okay let it run let it run the query because it's in the use and also like this query i'm running it's still executing and let me show you my sql server performance like my system performance here you see the cpu is going high and see now the query is giving the data let it complete and you see a sudden drop in my cpu usage as well and this is one single query my system is 8 gb ram with i3 processor so just one query can make it go high okay let it complete it will take a minute to just bear with me sorry i want to show you and this is the only query which will be longer after that you will understand even i just give you a hint like this is bad Uh, we are coming nearby. So now the query is complete and you see the SQL CPU you see now it was between like 47 to 50 60, 60. Now it is just back to 20. You can see a sudden drop in CPU just with one query Okay, now let's see what is happening in this query. Let me just drop this index again So that query was using the index. So let me just drop it It won't take that much time and rerun this query So here see the output 384 records here the output 384 record how much time taken 1.53 seconds and here it's less than a second if i see the execution plan it's a simple execution plan and if i see the execution plan in here it's kind of a little bit bigger okay so now we will break down the execution plan in multiple things but first let us see how to analyze the statistics because now here i am running this query i am uh, suppose there is a thousand table involved so this statistics will not be that small it will be very big so how you will analyze it you have to go in one website called statistics parser it's very good website it's free to use what you have to do is you just have to copy your statistics paste it here and click on parse so it will give you a you can have more readable format like how much logical reads you can see the scan logical reads so this student table has two scan and 1200 logical reads and so on and so on. and now let us have a copy from the other query which was doing taking more time and let's see what its statistic says let me just paste it and click on parts now here you see how many logical read i'm doing scan is like 6900 and the logical read is like it's seven digits i think yeah it's seven digit and here the logical read is four digit and the scan is two digit uh, one digit and the thing is the irony is both has the same data it's 384 records and 384 records less than one second almost near to two seconds now what is the difference let's see the execution plan and here your first lesson will come one is using statistics time and io on to determine which query is expensive and which is not which is based on the logical read and physical read usually physical read doesn't matter a lot because a lot of times they uh, if you are reading first time the data it may have a physical read but logical read matter a lot if it is more means every time your query has to do a lot of input output in the memory so first thing is 
statistics I have time you will see and seeing the execution plan now what we will look into the execution plan now this first example is for spooling okay so there is something called as lazy spool there are multiple types of spooling one is lazy spool so whenever you see an execution plan let me just hide my icon sorry there are so many icons okay so whenever you see an execution plan and contain any operator called lazy spool believe me that is the problem okay so now if i just do let me do one thing because there was index used so that's why it's a different now let me just get a so here uh, execution plan now here you see there is a lazy spool which says one percent of the see you get the total cost of this execution plan now why lazy spool is bad see it says one percent but if you see after it it says 98 percent of the total cost is spent in this part of your execution plan plus one which is 99 percent so 99 percent of your query performance is happening in this part just this part so whenever you see an lazy spool this is the most expensive operator in total sql server so whenever you see a thousand line or 200 line execution plan just see the part where it is doing a lazy spool see the things which is happening after that one percent and then try to figure it out how to fix it now how to fix it comes with how why it comes now lazy spool is not bad in a way why it is not a bad it is meant for solving a problem but the problem is when there is no problem and we are telling sql server to solve it now lazy spool comes when there is a duplicate aggregation aggregation is group by some minimum maximum or any of those kind of operators whenever there is a duplicate aggregation happening a lazy spool will come so why am i queries doing duplicate aggregation if i can fix it without doing a duplicate aggregation then i am good so here if you see the query what i'm doing is i'm selecting my students and from the student i'm getting their year when they were born and in that year what was the most you can say uh, who was the most youngest student of that year get me that record so 384 are the most youngest student from each and every year that's how i am getting the data so so one uh, year can have multiple people with the same date which are the most youngest like all people born on 31st december so they will be youngest among all so those kind of things but what happens is for each student suppose i have one lakh students okay from that one lakh student year they are born now most of the student will be born in 90s so let's say like 100 so there will be 100 year only for which i have to get the data even though there are one lakh students still there are only 100 years so if i'm getting maximum date of birth of that year it won't change because if you are suppose i am born in 1991 so suppose the most youngest child was 31st december now you are born in 1991 again the most youngest will be the same because maximum dob is just getting the maximum date of birth of that year so it won't change anything okay so in that terms what happens is every year every time i'm calculating the this max dob so i'm doing duplicate aggregation even though it won't change so what sql server does it try to maintain a spool i will not be going in deep why what is spool and how it works but the concept is lazy spool means it's a duplicate aggregation now how you can fix a duplicate aggregation now in this example what i did is i calculated the year and their max dob before even joining with the student once i got that i just joined it with the student and i got my output so what i did is to remove the duplicate aggregation i just do a summary before my query i can use a temp table i can use a ct or do can and use anything so what it helps in where my logical read was sky high seven digit and scan one four digit the moment i did uh, you can say uh, I computed my aggregation before the query, so there should not be any duplicate aggregation. The moment I did it, it came to four digit, and for sure there will be a difference in the performance. That was two minutes, and it is around less than a second. So you understood. So whenever you are seeing an execution plan, the first thing is you get the expensive query. As I told you, uh, you can see it is not covered there. Once you got the expensive query, see which query or which part of the query is having lazy spool and try to fix that before because that's almost very easy to solve because most of the time it's always because of duplicate aggregation which you can fix by using temporary tables pp or anything
whatever you want to do so that's the one thing so spooling means duplicate aggregation so you don't have to remember all the things what i will take so by the end of the series you can say you can say hey, i will give you this list you just need to remember one is cpu use the static name and io third is if there is a spooling in the uh, any part of the query try to fix it before because that will have your massive change here you can see two minutes to one second so it's like almost like 200 times the change was there so that is one thing and then after this you will see the hash match let's say what is hash match hash match is nothing but an unsorted data okay now suppose you are as you know, first you have to see the spooling second you have to see hash match okay let's discuss more on spooling let me cover a few more examples so that you can understand now is all spooling wrong no okay so here what i did is i just created an update statement and i have an index on this fright fright is nothing but a total so what here our execution plan is doing it is using in just an update statement there is no join happening there is no grouping happening still there is like eager spooling and what is eager spooling it's nothing as i told you there is a spooling involved is the spooling is nothing but a temporary saving of data to make a compute easy so why there is a spooling involved in just a simple update because what happened your table has a lot of records and there is an index on this right when i'm running so first sql so what it is doing is trying to filter it out all the records which is having this condition true and then putting it to a temporary location and then taking those records and going into the physical table and updating them that's how it is working so what happens is spooling is never always bad so this is one more way of doing this now even you see if i force it to use primary index it still say like 50 50 percent is the cost but still in a lot of the cases when you have a huge table eager spooling will be helpful so spooling is never bad but lazy spool is a bad okay one more example where are the cases where you cannot avoid a spooling now i created a query i am not going into depth of this query this query is getting me a hierarchical data hierarchical data is nothing but like you have an employee you have a manager that manager is having for certain like again sub employees those sub employee can be manager of other people and so on so it's like uh, like you can say a multi-level mlm multi-level marketing kind of structure so suppose you want to get all the hierarchy who works under whom in that case you have to write a recursive cd if you are very much familiar with recursive cd then it's okay else you can watch my cd video which is already there okay come back to this so i'm writing a recursive cd now if i run my query you will see a lazy spool happening here you see you see a lazy spool happening now in this case you cannot avoid why why you cannot avoid here there is no aggregation happening but there is a recursion so recursion in that case lazy spool will come and you cannot avoid it so first thing is you try to find a query which are expensive second is there any spooling if there is isn't spooling whether it's because of recursive query if it is because of recursive query, just ignore it if it is not because of so, uh, recursive query it is because of duplicate aggregation then try to fix it okay in, once you do it your query will be half resolved then coming to the hash match now hash match is nothing but an unsorted data now what do you mean unsorted data now in my this query when i'm seeing i'm running i am let's see the execution plan so here you see an hash match am i right what is this hash match what is happening is when i'm calculating year and the maximum dov now group by why it is considered as expensive operator reason group by always include sorting of data so when you do an order by people say don't order by the data if you're not required because it's an expensive but when you do group by it becomes order by first and then grouping so it's always double the amount of you can say on uh, sorting time so first time uh, you can say grouping the data and getting their maximum uh, you can say dov now in this case data will be sorted in certain way because that's how the grouping works okay now here is the sorted data but when i'm joining with the student table on the base of date of birth there is no index there so student doesn't have any index on date of birth so what sql server has to do is it has to sort the data based on the dob and then it has to make a join so to do that what it do is it calculate and hash and then make a join so how you can resolve it one is there is an index missing first is first cases there is an index missing index for student let's see 
and I create this index. So one more thing to remember is here you see my logical read was four digits. Now let us see I created the index. Now let me just close this and run my query again and see whether that brings the logical read down. So let's first see the logical reads. So this is my after creating the index. Let me get a duplicate app, paste it. So here my logical read is uh, you can say reads are reduced from four digit to three digit and it's almost like you can say half like 1200 to 600 so hash match has like half the advantage in our scenario and the scanner more scanner okay because the same data it has to scan so scan you can ignore till the time logical reads are going down okay means like in even in that many logical it still the scans are less in here the logical readers are more so scans are still less doesn't make any sense so now if i see the execution plan now hash match this is hash match aggregation so you don't have to hash match aggregation means it has to uh, hash the data before doing the aggregation so that's a separate but here the join got changed join got changed to nested join the reason is uh, now the data is sorted it can it knows okay how to find the data between the index like using the index so your after spooling hash match is your target for hash match you have to see whether there's a missing index that is one second sometimes index is already there but your query won't utilize it and why that case comes let me give you a simple example let me add date add and i will say add zero date to my data with now this is you can say logically wrong but nothing has to be done like that but i'm just saying there is a function working on your data birth like you said date with a date let's say date birth. what i'm doing is i'm trying to convert my uh, cast as date as date and i will do the same for this side cast as date and now i run my query and see the execution plan now one thing is execution plan got increased but still hash match doesn't occur but now what i will do is i will say date add and i will say d comma zero just add a zero date to it nothing else and just remove this one and let me just run the same query again output is still the same now here you see hash match came again still index is there but hash match came again because when i added a function on my you can say uh, column now SQL, SQL server cannot determine whether the data will be sorted or not because there is a function means there is an output coming out of the function so SQL server cannot determine whether the output is a sorted output or not so in that case SQL server will go for hash match so one reason is missing index the second reason is index is there but people has used function on their columns in where clause or in joins especially this is for the join because we are talking about hash match join so they have used a function on a column then first thing is you have to remove that try to get out another way to do that because if there is a function still there is an index still it is going for hash match there is no benefit of it and if you see the execution you can count let's say and we see the logic read and run it still it is less than the without indexing but still it is more than the without like without hash match when the index were getting you properly used so this is the second lesson to you first is find the queries see spooling see the statistics if spooling is there remove it if it is because of uh, ct uh, like a recursive ct ignore it if it is hash match is there see if there is an index is there or not if index is not there uh, create an index if index is there then try to see why it is not getting used okay key lookup i won't be covering it's very simple like uh, okay um, let me give a try to cover key lookup to the same example let me just create this so let me run this query again now it is not telling the missing index okay uh, let me just create an okay because of this let me just run again index again see if the hash match key lookup comes or not but key lookup is nothing but a missing column from the index 
and I will just remove the last name from the index. Right now, here you see index contain index keys DOB and the include is first name. And let's try to run the same query again. Yep. Now see what happened is it still went to the index because it has the DOB for the join. Join is nested. But as my output includes star means output do contains first name and last name DOB and student ID. Now it cannot find last name in my index so it has to again go to the table to get just one index or just one column so this is the key lookup thing your index is missing some column now solution to key lookup is add the column to the index now here i can see there is an extra column so what i will do is i will go into my index add that column and see whether my key lookup goes or not let me just add my last name to the column let's see recreate and I rerun it and here you see there is no key lookup happening and reason for that is because now it contains the column now solution to key lookup is if there is a missing data in the index now how you can fix it add the data but sometimes it's not possible uh, because a lot of time suggestion will come with add all the columns you cannot add all the columns to the index it will be like miserable uh, updates you will have an inserts so key lookup is if you have a huge table and huge index and just one column is missing from the index, take a chance, add that column to the index to make it far faster. And you want to see whether the key lookup increase the logical read or not? Let's check. Let me just remove my index again. Run it again. So now, let me just duplicate the thing and run. Now here you see it because there is a key lookup, it end up doing more logical reads than the actual query without the index. See the irony. So because still it is using the index because the filtration is faster just to out get the data again it has to again go to the table it has to read more data to get just one column out so that's why this key lookup is doing more logical read than the actual query so if i just fix it by adding that one column again and run this again again it's back to the three digit so all good so far because this is the main part because whenever you are seeing a query, you need to know whether there's a spooling or not, how to fix the spooling. If it is duplicated, you can remove it using CT or temporary table, table variable, or what you use. Unsorted data, missing index, whether index are getting properly utilized or not. Because I have seen a lot of time indexes are there and people do crazy functions, uh, you conversion of date and date time just to make their life easier by writing that small syntax but it end up doing bad whether there's a key lookup or not okay now once you have done that see whether there is a bad views or not now views are often used to simplify the query so they are not bad but a lot of time its performance they become a problem now we know like the definition of views it's just a stored query now how it can be a bad in a performance let me show you a simple example so I created a view. Let me go to the bottom. So I created a simple view, which is getting me. It is joining three tables: order, order details, and product. And it is getting me a certain, like you can say, six six columns. Okay. Now, this is one more query, which is exact query. There is nothing but just a max stop I added because to remove the. And if I go to the execution plan, okay, let's let me just run my CD and see the execution plan for this and the below. And I will run and see the execution plan of both the queries. Now here you see the execution plan is exactly the same. So there is no performance problem. The cost is also, it says 50%. So the execution plan, if I run CT and that same query outside is the same, but there is a difference in the data. Now, what is the difference? In my view, I'm getting six column, but here I'm getting one more column extra. 
now a lot of time there will be a situation where someone has to write a new stored procedure or function or query where they are using existing views and views are missing one column from the table so what they generally do is they will add one more join of the view to the same table again just to get that one column out now what will happen let's compare i'm using the view going to the table back just to get one more column okay uh, i think there is something missing okay let me okay well, i think there is something missing okay let me just run so that you won't get much time to waste on this okay now if i run my both the queries now see the execution plan this execution plan is again the query even though i'm getting that one column but here in this just getting that one column what has happened it, it has to go back to the table again to get this that one column okay because here you see it is joining with uh, order details two times because just i have to get the one more column and logical reads if i see the logical read of this let's say it is 2 and 22 and 11 simple and if i run the logical read for this fellow so 11 become 22 again because it's become double because this is order details okay order details as it has to refer two times it becomes the double so bad views are like there is no technical term as bad views the bad views is if there is a view which people are using in all the queries and if they are missing columns and instead of writing a new view or altering the same view what they are doing is trying to join the same table which are already part of the view then it's bad so what what is the solution either create a new view or alter the existing that's the simple thing okay okay now coming toward okay let's see uh, okay now unnecessary sub queries now this is one of the best example I, why i have to click in slides okay unnecessary sub queries now i will give a simple example i will give you time to think what will be your query and then you tell me okay i have to get me my all the customers and their most recent order last order what was the amount of that order and what was the uh, you can say ship name with which what they shipped uh, like from uh, with which ship they were shipped to the customer now i'm just getting the last which most recent order not all the orders so i cannot do a join with orders because then it will get me all the data i cannot do a maximum order id because if i do a maximum order id then how i will get them by last right i have to get maximum right now it can be of old order so it won't be right so just by using maximum order id i won't be able to get so how i should be able to do that it can be used but it won't be that straightforward just think about it getting just the most recent one order not multiple orders any idea so usually what people do is they will write sub queries like they will say for this column get me the order id from the table join it on the customer id from the table orders order it by order id descending on get the maximum order id that's a separate thing and then in the right similar way get uh, order from the most recent top one order from the order table join on the customer id order by order id descending and get the freight means it is from the same order because i am doing order by order id descending so i will always get a most recent order and then the ship name same exactly the same way now suppose i want to get the order date what i will do is i will copy add one more order date and i will copy this one out so what this approach do is for n number of columns i have to write n number of uh, n number of times i have to write the subquery so this becomes very problematic because i want to get all the you can say uh, you can say most recent just the most recent. so how i resolve it i can resolve it by using cross apply now in crop supply if you haven't used cross apply it's a separate topic and if you have to go in cross apply it's it's a small topic but it's a very good and interesting topic if you know cross apply you can do a lot of things what cross apply do is for each record coming from the left side it will run this subquery so here what i'm doing is instead of running four subquery i'm saying get me one record from order where the customer id matches order by order id descending and in that one record i'm getting all the columns i need to order date and if i run this i can get the same exact output now if i run both the queries let's see what will be the performance so above query cost me 77 percent and the below query 23 percent 
from the batch above query logical read is like let me say zoom 17 16 and logical read for the below query is 7502 so it's like three times smaller and the problem with above query if i have to get more columns i have to add more queries and it becomes expensive like every time it will become more expensive let's say more ship country let's say ship country and if i run both the queries again all together and see now it becomes more logical read because it is increasing but the below query is 502 it's the constant because it has to get only one time all the records all the columns whatever i need okay now here one problem will be like cross apply you will have 89 records the above query will give you around 90 or 91 records because it's getting all the customer but cross apply only gets a common you can say uh, output so here is 91 so how to fix it there isn't something called as outer apply so it's similar to cross apply it's like a left join so it will get all the records even though the patient uh, the customer hasn't placed any order so it's very simple okay so i hope this uh, video is helping you out so the concept is like unnecessary subquery using cross apply uh, or any other logic whatever you want to do that's all on you but usually cross apply I use for that and sometimes i use temp table also so if you remove unnecessary uh, subqueries it will for sure reduce the logical read if logical read, uh, reads are getting reduced everything is good okay i don't know why my slides are duplicated uh, let me just remove it okay now this is the most important topic understand because this will make a huge impact on your performance and this is partition elimination if somehow your database is partitioned your company use partition believe me if you can see your query are not using the partition properly and you make them use it there will be a huge change in performance and that i can just show you now itself okay so partition is nothing but like you subdivide table physically in terms of the partition means you said like i want to create partition yearly from less than 2003 records will be in partition a 2003 to 4 will be b 4 to 5 will be in c and greater than 5 will be in default partition let's say now what happens is your data is partitioned but your query is not using those partitions now how to fix it i will just give you a simple example i have a table order details which is partitioned okay if i run my subquery go here go into my properties let me just select so here you see there is an actual so this thing actual partition count you won't find in other queries which uh, on other query which doesn't have the partitionings so this will be always on the tables which have the partition so here these two things will come actual uh, partition count and the actual partitions access so it is getting how many it used like 1 2 25 and 25 are the total used because i'm doing star so what i have to do is i have these two parameters start date and end date i'm getting the records between these two dates and i am and the below query is exactly the same but just there is a casting like i'm using casting the date time two to date okay now let me run both the queries and together so that you can see what is the difference so the first query is seems to be a little bit complex but if i click here what it has done it has uh, let me yeah so the first query what it has done it has selected all the partition means uh, total partition in the table are 25 it still used all the 25 partitions so there is no partition elimination happening means no partition got avoided but let's see the second query see the first query is a little bit complex also the second query now if i click on this and see the exit uh, this my properties here you see actual partition count is two only two partition partition it has to go to get you the data so this query was able to eliminate 23 partition total partition was 25 23 it avoided only two partition it reads to get you the data for sure this will be faster so here see the performance above query 89 percent this query 11 percent what is the logical read first one used 46 logical reads and second one used only four now what is the difference between both the queries the column data type order date was date time not the date time too just a basic difference the parameter column type data type doesn't match with the 
column data type and this just don't go with the you can say partition elimination this can also work with other things also like without partitioning also but here you see in partitioning for you date time to end date may be almost the same if you are not considering the millisecond part of it but for sql server it's a huge difference so what sql server do is if it doesn't match the data type it goes for all the partition and believe me this thing has made a huge impact in my uh, you can say experience there was a query we optimized from 90 minutes to 10 second uh, how it happened was i was able to get that query from 90 minutes to two minutes by other spooling and other thing but from that two minutes to 10 seconds just this partition elimination bring and why because our table was around 200 gb of data and the moment we did partitioning it has to just scan few records or few partition to get the data when there were like around uh, almost around like 90 partitions and it has to just go in one partition and get get the data like not the 90 it's like almost like 100 200 partition because there was like around eight months data and uh, the moment there is a partition it just have to go in one or two partition it there was a huge difference to get the data so the partition elimination why it doesn't happen one using a different data type and second there can be different reasons also let's say i added a function date add you remember this is my favorite function to show an example so what i did is now uh, not here let me do it on the other side let me do it on this side so now if i run the same query again and see what happened to the partitioning now here the partition is same 25 now if i go here what happens it only scanned 23 partition it only was unable to like it was able to exclude only two partition the reason was it was able to determine the start you can say date because start date was very simple but end date it was unable to determine because there is a function used on the column you have to be very sure never to use function on the columns in where clause and in joins till the time you can avoid them okay so because if there is no other uh, like way to do it then uh, you cannot do it but if there is a way always avoid using any function this thing mess up your whole query so what i just did is i just use a function so same query remains like whole query remains same and it has a problem now i will just transfer it to start date okay so means end date is still deterministic so if i run and go into my query click here and see now it becomes one to four you remember it was using three to four three and four partition but now it is one to four because now it is unable to determine the start partition so it is using four partition it is able to determine the last partition but not the starting partition now if i just remove make it normal again i go it only use two partition so it matters a lot if your table is partitioned the reason for partitioning the table is to run your queries fast okay if that is not happening then what is the use of partitioning because partitioning is a big, big headache move for on the maintenance if you are doing the maintenance part and still your query doesn't use the partition you have to make sure they should use so let's go back to the slide and see what we done first we saw what is the executional plan seeing how to use statistics io and time then once you have the bad running queries see whether there's a spooling or not spooling is nothing but duplicate aggregation if there is a duplicate aggregation remove it how to remove it different ways by ct temporable or temporary uh, table variable then seeing hash match hash match is missing index because it's unsorted data missing index or index is not getting used because of one reason using any function on where close or join should not be there and it applies to partition elimination it applies to hash match and one more next slide it will be the same for that also then coming to the key lookup key lookup is nothing but a missing data from your index if you can add that to it, if it is one column and it doesn't make a difference just add it to the index and it will be far easier for your sql server to do it uh, then after that it comes bad views bad views are nothing but when people don't alter the views just to get one or two column extra they make a join to the same table then it becomes miserable sometimes so how you do it alter the view or create a new view and use it okay then subquery minimization i use this uh, you can say cross apply we see the traditional you can say most common example where people have to get the most recent record and they start using subqueries and it becomes miserable so how to fix it just use a uh, cross apply and get the data once and use it last was partition elimination this is most important if your table are partitioned and your queries are not using the partition properly 
then there is a huge scope of improvement if you just tweak the queries a little bit and make them use your partition it is awesome one more case i will uh, let me discuss uh, it is not covered in the example now suppose uh, i will give an example of casino industry because i work there so there is a table called player then there is a player called uh, game and then there is a play, uh, uh, table called jackpot now once the player played a game there is an ordered uh, you can say game date okay uh, no not in the player like player game table so player game table he played so there is an order date and that table is partitioned in game not the order date it's like game date when he played and that column is a partition key now jackpot also have a game date it also have the same column that is also partitioned now what happened i used game date in a where clause on uh, you can say player and game table but i didn't used on jackpot the reason is jackpot can only happen when there is a game the person played a game so i can put the same where condition on game date for jackpot as well as on this one now what will happen is both the tables are different both are partition so partition elimination will happen in both the tables not in just one so you can induce partition elimination if it is part of one condition and the same column exists there and that's a partition column why not to use it so even though this case doesn't mind uh, like not make you much clear but avoid it but main thing is partition elimination make sure your partition are getting utilized properly else it, there is no use of doing them okay now last but not the least is the searchable queries searchable queries we have seen already in example now you more uh, identifies i used this syntax where i added this function so this becomes like non searchable query searchable means search argument the moment i used a function on my any column it becomes non searchable because sql server cannot determine the output while running the query so it goes for crazy operation like it did it did partition elimination it went to hash match in the first example and so on something so searchable query nothing but you make the output determine non deterministic also like you use like so when you say x y a b c percentage this is deterministic it knows it start with a b c but the moment you say percentage a b c like it should then it become non searchable because it has to scan through all the data so searchable queries are very common uh, never so the basic example is never you can say let anyone use functions on columns in where clause or joins till the time they can be avoided what they happen do it they end up doing hash match you remember like we already have this index let's see we already have an index so what i do is i just add the state add function just add zero date so here the join is nested join so unless you loop so you can see if i run now it goes to hash match hash match is again unsorted data and now it even it is not giving suggestion because it cannot determine so what it do is it make your query to go for hash match in a lot of the cells so always make your query searchable as much as possible avoid as many functions as possible in where clause then you can say joins miscellaneous tips it's like avoid external grouping external groupings like a lot of time i've seen people doing same grouping again and again and again uh, uh, like suppose you have table order and order details and you want to uh, also get the count of order one customers uh, you can say please so instead of grouping at the bottom you can do it on the top so there are multiple thing use uh, cross apply unpivot to make your data use row number and fetch uh, offset and fetch to get uh, you can say uh, if you don't have to get serial number of the records and you just have to get top 10 and top 20 and those kind of records you can do and with pagination you can do with offset and fetch it's very good it's now very better than uh, using row number and doing it uh, rank versus sub queries like use rank like these are like which you can use okay so i hope you must have Uh, like now you have known like how to solve a problem how to figure it out what is wrong with your query if you have any question you can reach me on email id that's yogesh.mail@gmail.com i'm also on skype you can reach me on whatsapp also if you have any question put it in comments if you need the scripts just put it in the comments i will share you the scripts and uh, the database backup which i'm using uh, if you are a company and you you want your developer to do uh, performance optimization i do provide pro, uh, training to them or secondly if you are in very bad situation 
just directly contact me or any dba uh, who can help you out because you won't be able to fix all the things in uh, hurry so if you have any question just put in comments or just mail me i will be very happy to help uh, so keep learning thank you bye bye